May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Old Joe lived way out in the country by himself. His best friend and his closest neighbor was Johnny, who lived across the creek on the farm next door. The two had been there so long that they had grown old together. With their wives having passed on and their children having grown and gone, all they had left were their farms and themselves. But for the first time in memory, they had a serious disagreement. One of old Joe's lambs wandered off and Johnny claimed it as his own since he found it on his land. Old Joe argued that the lamb was clearly his. If he was yours, what's he doing on my property? Johnny said. Things got bad. They got so bad that they started arguing about other things and finally they just stopped talking to each other. This went on for months. What had started as a disagreement became an ugly, divisive battle. They dragged neighbors into the fight, forcing them to take sides. Are you with old Joe or are you with Johnny? One day, a traveling carpenter came through the country, down the country road, and he stopped at old Joe's place. Carrying his tools, he stepped up and knocked on old Joe's door. And old Joe, who used to be civil and friendly, and who had become embittered and lonely, peeked through the slightest opening in his door and snarled, what do you want? With his toolbox at his feet and kindness in his eyes and voice, the carpenter answered, well, I'm a carpenter and I'm traveling by and I wondered if you had any projects I could help you with. Joe opened his door just a little bit more and shot back. As a matter of fact, I do have one. See that creek down there? I need to build a high fence along the creek so I can't look at my neighbor's house anymore. I, I just am sick of it, and I have to keep him off my property, so I need a fence. The carpenter looked at the creek and then turned back and looked at Joe with a smile and said, I promise you I will do a good job. The next day, as morning dawned, old Joe loaded up the wood for the fence and took it down to the creek. He said to the carpenter, you know what to do. And the carpenter looked at him and said, yes, I do. And with that, Joe headed into town to get some more supplies for his farm. Well, the carpenter knew exactly what to do. He set to work immediately. He worked all day measuring and sawing and nailing and putting everything together just right. And as the sun was setting, it was finally finished. It was then that old Joe pulled up in his wagon. He was silenced by what he saw. The carpenter had not built a fence. He had built a beautiful footbridge across the creek. Before Joe could speak, Johnny came walking across the bridge. And in the light of dusk, Old Joe saw Johnny had something on his shoulder. Johnny reached out his hand and said, Joe, I am so glad that we're back together again. Here is your lamb. I was wrong. Please forgive me. I just want us to be friends. Old Joe stuck out his hand and the two old men pulled each other into a hug right there at the center of the bridge. With that, the carpenter hoisted his toolbox on his shoulder and turned to leave. And old Joe said, hey, hey, where are you going? You've got to stay a while. Johnny and I have plenty of projects you can work on. And the carpenter said, no, I've got to be going. I have more bridges to build. This is a very simple story. It's a great story to start this new year with. 
It's a story of building bridges rather than fences. It's a story of unity over division. It's a story of friendship that overcomes anger. It's a story of healing that overcomes hurt. It is a story we need today as we step over the bridge from 2020 to 2021. We have come through a year that has literally kept us apart. As we have been apart, the spirit of divisiveness has grown in too many ways in too many places. However, through this time, I know that there have been traveling carpenters, men and women who have dedicated themselves to building bridges rather than fences. In our families, in our neighborhoods, in our city, these Itinerant carpenters have been working hard to build bridges to bring us back together. They have done so in a spirit of unity over division. They have smiled rather than snarled, and they have built up rather than torn down. We can all name and claim the feelings we have when something or someone has been ripping us up, tearing us down, and destroying relationships. It literally hurts us right here. It goes right to the soul and to the heart of what gives us pain. However, it is also an incredibly essential that we name and we claim the feelings that we have right here. When people build us up and bring us together in our relationships, often like the carpenter, they work alone with very little light shining on their efforts. Nobody makes a big deal about them. They just go about doing the right thing. But their finished product is a bridge built to bring us together. It is clear, and it is as clear as light shining in the darkest places. It is my hope and my prayer that each of you are a part of this bridge building experience. If you haven't done that in the year following, step over the bridge with me into the new year and do it now. I implore you this morning to be resolved to be bridge builders in your family, in your neighborhood, in your town, in your community, in your school, in your workplace, wherever you are. We have plenty of tools that have been given to us in this amazing faith that we have in Christ, the carpenter who built bridges. The Apostle Paul provides us with six tools in our toolbox this morning that speak about unity in Christ in Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. First, he reminds us in Ephesians 1, 3 that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven. So God blesses us each and every day God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. The first tool in the box today. Second, Paul tells us that before the foundation of the world, I'm, I'm almost giggling because it's like, it's, it's unbelievable. Before the foundation of the world, we were chosen to be holy and blameless and, blameless and covered by God's love. This is huge. It is proclaimed as well in the first chapter of John's gospel. Before the world was, the light of God was. We were known and we were named by God in this love that God had from the beginning of time. The foundation of the earth was established in love. It is love upon which everything is built. And that's not just a thought or a nice idea. That's what it says in the gospel today. Love is laid down as the foundation of the world so that each of us can be chosen to be holy and blameless and covered by this love. Third, tool in the box. Paul reminds us that we have all been adopted by Christ as God's very own. We all belong to Christ. The power tool of adoption is a very powerful tool indeed. If we see ourselves as adopted, not born into this family of faith, we all come into the faith the same way and we all come in together. We come in not because 
we were created that way and came out that way. We come because we made a choice. And we were chosen by God as well. So adoption means that we're wanted. We're truly wanted. Our heavenly parent seeks for us to be in this family. We have been sought after and chosen by God to be one with Christ. So let's not lose touch with this truth and this tool. Fourth, through Christ our sins are taken away and we are forgiven by the riches of God's grace. That is a powerful tool. Our prayers of confession, our assurances of pardon aren't simply religious exercises that we go through to take up time in the service of worship. They are real and they're lasting reflections of God's grace in our lives. Grace is not a game. It is a way of life. It is a way of moving from hurt to healing, from division to unity. It is through God's grace that we come to know the fullness of God's love. Love and grace are like the left and right hand of God working in and through us all the time. So let's use both hands in building bridges in 2021. Love and grace. The fifth tool we find in Ephesians 1 is this in the 10th and 11th verse. God's salvation is offered for all. This is like a great gift. We live with Christ forever. He gathers us together every day in the unity of his spirit. Honestly, this tool is essential. God is at work in all of our lives, everyone's life, everywhere. This isn't a Christian message. This is for everybody. We may not see it all the time. We may not accept it all the time. We may not embrace it all the time. But God's salvation is there for all of us, all the time. All we need to do is accept the gift that God is giving. This tool is powerful. It acknowledges that we're bound to Jesus all the days of our lives. And we may not see it or feel it or reflect it every day. We may not feel it like we may not feel like we're really doing that well one day, right? But that's on us. And we can change when we go to bed and wake up the next day. It's a new day. God has given us this forever tool, and we simply need to use it. And the sixth tool that Paul gives us in Ephesians is this, that you and I are marked as belonging to God by the Holy Spirit through the truth of the gospel in Christ's name. That's a lot to take in all at once. That's a big thought. But simply put, we belong to God. This is a very liberating and freeing word. If we feel our connection is in God, then our daily actions are meant for the good of all, through God. We are filled up with the Spirit, and we walk, and we live, and we act, and we love in the ways of the Spirit. So there it is. Filled with God's grace and kindness, chosen for greatness in God's love, and marked and claimed by the Holy Spirit for living out the bridge-building way, does it get any better than this? this is the, these are the tools in the box that we've been given just in Ephesians this morning. There's plenty more that we'll pick up through the rest of the year. The star word that Mark mentioned is a question. How, what words will you claim this year? What words will you uh, take into your soul? Can our mission for 2021 be any more blessed than starting in the love of Christ that Paul brings to us in this letter to the church at Ephesus. So as we approach God's table of grace to begin our New Year's walk with Christ, let's just add one more tool for building bridges. It's this. In this season of epiphany that is unfolding in just a few days, this season of light, the season of manifestation of God's love in Christ. We are each one of us called to make one resolution for this new year. And it is this, to be resolved to thrive in the light of Christ. Moving beyond surviving, we need to get past surviving and we need to move to thriving. May you and I walk and talk and act and live in the love and the light of Christ. The light which the Magi followed to the stable in Bethlehem is calling each of us out into the world this year. The light of the world is calling us to be bridge builders this year. 
And as we are reminded in John's first chapter, the light of Christ is full of grace and truth. And from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. So there it is. Let's be bridge builders. May we walk in the light as each day grows longer. May we walk in the light as love grows stronger. And may we come across the bridge that Christ has built from despair to hope, from division to unity, from hate to love. Come across the bridge with me and let's go to the table of grace. Amen.